toys, we all had them. Every child gets excited by the idea of something new to play with, but not all toys are made alike. In fact, some are just terrible ideas from the very beginning. But hey, when has a bad idea ever stopped someone from making a money? From a summer staple to an insanely hot 1950s sensation, let's count down the 20 most dangerous toys ever made. <sighs> Number 20. Inflatable Float I know, I know. How could it be that such a popular summertime object could be so dangerous for kids? Well, come on, just think about it for a second. You're having a good time in the pool and then your kid who can't swim falls off the float and can't get back on because it keeps flipping or sinking. Scary time! Inflatable floats can be great fun for kids, but they can also be highly dangerous. Especially so if your kid is either not a great swimmer or just doesn't know how to swim. In fact, parents are often advised that if their kids are going to play with inflatables, you should never take your eyes off them. According to official statistics, over 77% of drowning incidents occur because nobody actually notices that the person in question is underwater. So, like a really good parent, make sure you're always aware of your surroundings. So to recap for a second, inflatable floats aren't dangerous in and of themselves. It's very much about the way they're used and, more specifically, the people who use them. You want to be sure that your kids are either good at swimming or that somebody nearby can jump in and save them if things go south. Otherwise, happy summer! Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. It's time for the rare topic. And when it comes to toys, one is never enough, right? So let's start by showing you this very unfortunate Barbie doll, which suffered a production error that affected around 50 dolls. The children were understandably terrified when they got their Barbie doll, only to find her eyes appeared to have fallen out of their sockets. Not great. Meanwhile, across the other side of the world, children were encountering this in toy stores. You're looking at what I can only assume is a demon baby. Why any child would want this, I don't know. But I can tell you pretty easily that this thing did not make kids feel comforted or calmed in any way. If anything, it made them feel more unsafe. What do you think? Would you have been happy with either of these terrifying toys? As always, comment down below with the hashtag RareTopic and let us know your thoughts. Let's move on to the next one. Number 19. Creepy Crawlers I don't know if these still exist today, but even if they don't, it's always a good time to flag up some of the more deadly side effects. Creepy crawlers have been around since 1964, and they were always pretty popular among kids. And, uh, lovers of toxic fumes, the idea is that kids would pour a liquid chemical into some creature molds before slipping it into a small oven or a hot plate to heat it into hardened rubber shapes. Now, admittedly, the original versions weren't all that safe. I mean, the early versions of the toy came with an open-face hot plate that reached temperatures of 390 degrees Fahrenheit. Imagine how many burns kids got from touching those little rubber creatures before they were fully ready. Ouchie, eh? But there is, of course, a bigger problem than just burns. The fumes. These toys did get a lot safer by the 1990s, but that was still before the world fully understood the dangers and side effects of inhaling PVC fumes. So you can just imagine how many kids damaged their own lungs by playing with… a toy. When you think about it, a child's Christmas is really just about getting stuff that could perhaps kill you later on in life. Number 18. Austin Magic Pistol 
This is the kind of toy that you could never even imagine was real, but my friends, it was very real. The Austin Magic Pistol was surely one of the coolest toys on the planet for most kids. But that doesn't mean it was safe. In fact, it definitely wasn't. The Austin Magic Pistol was a toy made of metal designed to resemble a ray gun from the early sci-fi movies. When it was released in the 1950s, it became the thing every kid wanted. And for one very specific reason, it was a flamethrower. Yeah, when you used the gun, you would load it with magic crystals, a mix of calcium, carbide, and water. When those crystals came into contact with a sparking trigger, you would get some combustion and a few flames shooting out of the end. Pretty wild. Of course, the fun didn't last long. When the world finally realized how dangerous it was to give kids guns that shot out flames, the toy became the subject of multiple bands. You have to give them credit for the idea, at least. Great idea, but maybe not as a toy, you know? Seems like you're just, uh, playing with fire. Thank you. Number 17. Polly Pocket Back in the early 2000s, it seemed like there were so many dolls on the market. I mean, seriously. But while most of them just seemed like blatant rip-offs of Barbie, some had unique selling points like Polly Pocket, a pint-sized version of Barbie. How could it possibly go wrong? Well, for some inexplicable reason, Mattel decided that they hadn't really pushed Polly Pocket as far as she could go. So, what's the natural next step after creating a tiny doll? Obviously, it put together a magnetic playset. It's the logical next step for a young girl's doll. Well, maybe it was a mistake. In fact, it definitely was. When the news broke that three young children all over the United States had to undergo surgery because they swallowed a magnetic piece from the playset, Mattel was forced to recall over four million playsets. As it turned out, the U.S. Consumer Product Safety Commission said they had 100 and 70 reports of the magnets falling out of the sets. So even if Mattel wanted to fight it, the case seemed pretty much over before it even began. I guess the lesson here is pretty obvious. Holly Pocket does not need or want magnets. Number 16. Bottle Rocket Party the packaging for Science Wiz's genius new idea has a tagline that probably got everybody excited. Throw a party they will never forget. Well, while they may have been pretty good on paper, the marketing team surely came to regret it when the product was finally released. The Bottle Rocket Party is pretty self-explanatory, I think. It's a collection of bottle rockets aimed at kids and marketed as to be used in party situations. So if you have a birthday party, feel free to release a couple of rockets and see what happens. Unfortunately, what happens is a lot of injuries. Investigations into the toy revealed that many children had been left with face, eye, and other injuries as a result of the unpredictable bottle rockets themselves. So that marketing slogan, throw a party they will never forget, well, hard to forget the party that made you blind in one eye, I guess. The toy was later taken off shelves out of concern for the safety of children, but it's kind of wild that it ever even existed in the first place. Why not just assemble a box? box of fireworks and call it the Pony Firework Express. I'm sure that would be way safer. For legal reasons, this is sarcasm. Number 15. Children's Wood Burning Kits Maybe I'm just not keyed into the children's toy market, but there seems to be a hell of a lot of kids' toys that revolve entirely around toxic fumes. Is that something the kids are into, or is it just corporate America's love of making kids pay for their future healthcare? Eh, probably both, actually. 
Children's wood burning kits are often seen as a way to help kids get in touch with their creativity and learn to make something unique and artistic. But the reality is much less romantic. In fact, it's outright dangerous. While the risk of toxic fumes is lessened, it's probably still not great to let your kid breathe in the beautiful, smoky scent of wood burning. But there's a bigger risk here. If your kid happens to get tired of carving into the wood, they may just see what happens when they try it on their own hand. Or, and this is more likely, they'll just accidentally brush against the pen and end up giving themselves a lifelong flesh signature. Either way, it's not the kind of thing you really want when you're helping your kid get in touch with their creativity. Maybe just stick to pen and pencil, alright? Nobody gets hurt with pen and pencil. Uh, not usually, anyway. Number 14. Easy Bake Oven The Easy Bake Oven has been a staple of childhood since… well, since the oven was even invented. While I don't have the data on hand, I would be surprised if the Easy Bake Oven was not the very thing that encouraged most people to fall in love with baking. Or at least, eating. That's where I started. But while it may be a great way to get kids into baking and preparing food, that doesn't necessarily mean it's entirely safe. In fact, it's not. There have been at least two incidents that forced Hasbro to recall Easy Bake Ovens, typically because children kept getting their finger caught in the mini appliances, and when they did that, they would experience some pretty painful burns. In fact, one incident even saw a girl have to get part of her finger amputated. Seriously, don't ever assume that something is 100% safe. Of course, the lesson was learned. Hasbro soon set to work on developing a new version of the appliance with an electric heating element instead of a light bulb. Has that improved things? Well, it's kind of hard to know, but I haven't heard of any more junior amputations, so I guess so. Number 13. Quick Folding Trampoline just from the very name, you may be jumping to some conclusions. If it's a folding trampoline, doesn't mean that a kid could somehow jump and have the trampoline fold in on them. Probably not, but that's not what makes this device unsafe anyway. The Stats 38 Quick Folding Trampoline is small, miniature even, but it's mighty. So mighty, in fact, that the manufacturer had to put a warning on the packaging. That warning reads, landing on the head or neck can cause serious injury, paralysis, or death. Now, if a toy has to list a warning like that, you should probably be hesitant before setting it up inside the house. And yet, some people do exactly that, with no padded handlebar or any safety measures whatsoever. It's not surprising that the kids could launch themselves into the ceiling if they were to set the trampoline up indoors. For this reason, the toy is often considered to be one of the most dangerous in the world. There's just something about the idea of a kid bouncing up and rebounding off the ceiling that could give any parent a headache. Probably not as severe a headache as the kid who just hit the roof, but close. Number 12. Moon Shoes it's an interesting thing about childhood. It seems most of the time, kids are just trying to get as close to the sky as physically possible. I mean, think about it. Swings, trampolines, doesn't it just seem like every child wants to go walking on the moon? Well, let me introduce you to the so-called moon shoe. The moon shoe is basically a pair of shoes that have been modified to act like trampolines. When they were first released in the 1950s, these shoes were made of metal, which locked your feet in as roller skates would. Then, whenever you wanted to bounce, the springs in the bottom would help propel you into the air. There was just one problem. They were so heavy. And that means if you happen to land on somebody's feet, they would probably have a few broken toes. 
shows. That happened a lot. Eventually, a much safer version of the moon shoe was released in the 1990s, but the pain continued. Sure, mom and dad had a few less broken toes, but the kids using the shoes still experienced some sprained and broken ankles. At this point, that's such a common complaint that I'm convinced it's part of the design. Propel yourself to the moon and break an ankle on the way back to Earth. Number 11. Sky Dancers as if it's not already clear, kids really want nothing more than to fly. So when you give them a toy that can actually do that, well, it's pretty easy to understand why that would appeal to them. And actually, the whole idea of the Sky Dancer was a pretty good one. In the late 90s, somebody came up with the concept of hard plastic dolls with wing-covered arms. When the kids would pull a cord, the dolls would launch right into the air and fly. It seems like a winner, doesn't it? Unfortunately, uh, gravity is kind of indifferent when it comes to kids and toys. So often, the toys would launch right into the kids themselves. Pretty much as soon as the toy was released, the reports came in thick and fast. Kids were suffering eye injuries, broken teeth, lots of cuts and bruises, and even a broken rib and concussion. This is the kind of PR nightmare that no toy company ever wants to face, but the manufacturer, Galoob, decided to take action. And by 2000, over 9 million Sky Dancers had been recalled. No word on how the kids reacted to their injuries, but we can only hope that they were okay and made a full recovery. Number 10. Crocodile Dentist Back when it first hit the scene, Jackass became a cultural phenomenon. Suddenly, kids and low IQ adults everywhere began testing the limits of human intelligence. But it wasn't just Americans that seemed determined to break every bone in their body. The Japanese also got involved, using kids' toys. Yep. I don't know if you know how crocodile dentist works. The idea is that you put your finger into the crocodile's mouth to find the sore tooth. But the crocodile will occasionally bite down on the finger in its mouth. So you have to get it out fast. Well, apparently that wasn't enough risk for the Japanese. So these guys decided to up the game a bit by replacing the teeth with razor blades. Yeah, you heard me. Razor blades. Obviously, the stakes of the game went up substantially. Not only will the crocodile bite you, he may well take your fingertips. Now, somehow, these guys managed to get away without making any trips to the emergency rooms. Well, almost. The croc actually did manage to get a couple of solid bites in, good enough to draw blood. I don't think I really have to say it, but I will anyway. Do not try this at home. Please leave it to the idiots. Number 9. Fidget Spinners In 2017, the world found a brand new toy that people of all ages could embrace. That was the Fidget Spinner. There was something about this little thing that people just could not resist. For some reason, spinning this thing brought them peace or prosperity or something. I don't know. But not everybody was a big fan. For one, teachers found them immensely irritating, but also health experts and safety obsessives saw a heck of a lot of problems in these spinny little toys. Experts at the Good Housekeeping Institute discovered that branded and knockoff fidget spinners contained parts that could potentially harm children if broken off. Of course, you could argue that about any toy ever made, and you'd probably be right. But when the toy is part of some new craze, there's arguably a much higher risk there. Kids want to play with these things. And let's be honest here, kids under three will eat just about anything they can get their hands on. If they can take a fidget spinner apart, they'll consume all the parts. But unfortunately, the chances of them somehow reforming a complete spinner in their gut is, uh, well, it's unlikely to say the least. Number 8. Barbie and Tanner Barbie has been around for decades, and while she's mostly remained the same, the world around her has evolved. For one thing, the world has finally accepted that everybody poops. And while we have yet to get a pooping Barbie toy, thank God for that, we do have the next gross thing, a pooping dog toy. 
In 2007, the manufacturers of Barbie were hoping to promote some responsible pet ownership in their young consumers. But the idea may have been better intended than actually executed. The initial concept was that Barbie's puppy Tanner would eat and dispose of his food. Unfortunately, the magnet inside the scooper accessory had a tendency to come loose. And if children ate the magnet, or more than one, the forces of physics can cause some obvious damage to the internal organs. It's not something you really want to be responsible for. I guess we should be kind of happy that the kids didn't try and eat the toy poop, but, well, that's a small victory in this case. Eating the magnet doesn't exactly lead to a better ending, does it? I guess we should just stop making toys all about being and pooping. Yeah, that's, uh, that's definitely a less weird situation to be in. Number 7. Clackers most people watching this video probably have no idea what a clacker even is, but back in the late 1950s and early 1970s, they were all the rage. Which is kind of surprising given how simple they were, but hey, this was a pre-internet era. Clackers were two heavy balls, usually made of hard acrylic, suspended from a swing. The game itself was simple, the kids would swing and clack the balls together to make a noise. But of course, a game this simple had to come with some pretty dangerous stakes, and in this case, those stakes were death. If hit with too much force, the clackers could become a projectile, the plastic could shatter and send jagged bits flying through the air. And you don't want to be the unfortunate kid on the other end of flying jagged plastic, believe me. During this era, the US Food and Drug Administration was, for some reason, also in charge of regulating toys. I'm not sure what that says about children's diets of the time, but... Uh, that's another thing. Anyway, in 1971, the FDA finally had to step in to impose some strict safety standards for all subsequent clackers. Some would say that's a little late, but hey, I'm sure they were busy checking the calories in a slinky. Number 6. Fisher Price Power Wheels more recently, we've come to recognize hoverboards as potentially dangerous, as some of them launch into flames or just explode. But it's not like they're the first toy in history to spontaneously combust. Fisher Price cornered the market for toy fires back in the late 1990s. The Fisher Price Power Wheels toy was designed as a battery powered ride on, and while it initially started off being pretty popular with kids, all of that took an unfortunate turn when nine children reported significant burns from the toy. As another 150 reports poured in, describing fires and smoking or melting parts, the company was eventually forced to take action. They eventually recalled 10 million cars and trucks in a desperate effort to protect children's health and safety, or if we're being totally honest and upfront here, to save their public image from being tarnished by reports of injured children set on fire by a cheap piece of plastic. So no, hoverboards are far from the most explosive toy in history. They're just the most recent toy to suffer from an unfortunate case of spontaneous combustion. Will they be the last? If history teaches us anything, it's that companies will always prioritize cheap plastic over long long-lasting, eco-friendly materials, so no. Number 5. Aquadots Another brand of toy that seems to be popular no matter the generation. Toys where you can use beads to design pretty patterns. There's always a market just waiting to express their creativity in whatever medium you happen to dream up. So, what made the Aqua Dots different from literally any of the others? Uh, they stuck together with water. Okay, so the idea isn't all that original, but that's not the problem at hand here. In fact, the real 
problem has nothing to do with water whatsoever. Instead, we're looking at yet another dangerous toy that can be swallowed very easily and with truly disastrous consequences. In the case of the Aquadots, an incident in 2007 saw two children slip into a coma shortly after swallowing the beads. When the beads were later inspected, experts discovered that they were coated with a chemical that converted into GHB, a date rape drug. That's really not good, is it? When the news finally reached the manufacturer, they took swift action and recalled over 4.2 million Aquadot sets. But did they actually know about the GHB? Well, we'll leave that to you guys to figure out. Either way, it won't be good, will it? Number 4. Lawn Darts now, if you're someone that's never actually played lawn darts, well, there's a very good reason for that. In fact, it may be more interesting to understand why they existed in the first place. Because, come on, they just seem like a terrible idea, don't they? Back in the 1950s, toy manufacturers decided that lawn darts would make for a pretty great game for kids and families alike. A family could gather together and throw the darts to see how far they could land them. Unfortunately, the dark side of the game pretty quickly began to appear. Over the next few decades, lawn dart injuries became more and more common. In 1970, the Consumer Product Safety Commission banned them, but an appeal by the manufacturer led to a compromise. They were legal, as long as they weren't marketed or sold as toys. Well, that didn't really work either. Injuries just kept coming. By 1988, the CPSC once again banned them entirely, and when the injuries continued to present themselves, the CPSC had to reissue the ban in 1997, encouraging everybody to destroy the lawn darts that they had. What a roller coaster ride, eh? Honestly, it almost makes you wonder which genius thought selling lawn darts to kids was a good idea in the first place. Number 3. Magnetic Building Toys We've already covered the dangers of magnets several times in today's video, and we're about to cover it again, because seriously, there cannot be enough said about the dangers of selling magnets to kids. It's like giving a dog a bone laced with acid. You're just asking for trouble. Children have always loved toys that have constructive elements to them. Just look at the long-term success of LEGO. An opportunity to create something new will always be a hit with kids. But when it comes to Rose Art Magnetics, you're looking at something altogether more dangerous. You see, if the magnets become detached from the plastic building pieces, you're looking at an outright health risk. There have been reports of many toddlers and children consuming the magnets, which then clump together in the small intestine, forming a blockage and requiring significant surgery. It seems like every other year there's some kind of magnet product being recalled en masse. Because, you know what? I'm no doctor or scientist, but I'm pretty confident that the human body has yet to evolve to the point of demagnetizing the food we consume. I'm sure that someday that day will come, but until then, my friends, stop eating magnets, buy some food, get some chocolate, eat a banana. Number 2. Hoverboards Surely you all knew this was coming, right? Just a few years ago, hoverboards were all the rage among kids and young people, but they quickly proved themselves to be a little bit more than your average toy. They were also deadly, or at the very least, uh, explosive. In 2015, the hoverboard became the it thing. Every child wanted to have one of these self-balancing scooters, but the trend was quickly overshadowed by the scale of problems that came alongside it. Reports were coming in almost constantly of the hoverboard exploding during use. In fact, the reports became so common that city officials and retailers were recalling and banning them outright. Over 500,000 hoverboards were recalled, after over 100 reports of fire-related incidents. I'm no statistician, but that does not sound good to me. Since the influx of explosive hoverboards, manufacturers and officials have worked together to make them 
much safer. But even then, the problems continued to appear. In fact, investigations into the quality and safety of these new and improved hoverboards have shown that they're still capable of potential fire risks. Between 2015 and 2018, there have been over 237,000 hoverboards recalled. So, maybe we're not back to the future just yet? Hopefully Doc Brown can come up with a way to stop them all exploding. Number 1. Mini Hammock Look, the idea of a hammock is all well and good. You get to just hang in the air and sleep or chill or whatever. It's a great idea, I get that. But in practice, they're just so dangerous and destined to hurt you that it almost seems impractical. Thankfully, one company saw the real problem at the heart of the hammock industry. They weren't available for kids. Yeah, one company actually set out to create a mini hammock designed to be used by children. Because why should adults be the only ones routinely injuring themselves? The hammocks were made from a fine nylon mesh and didn't come with a spreader bar of any kind. Which means, you guessed it, the kids would just end up tangling themselves up in the hammock. And while trying to get out of that tangled mess, they would inevitably fall out and probably land on the floor and break something. Well, luckily the Consumer Product Safety Commission saw a problem with this, which is why why they put out a recall and safety warning on multiple mini hammocks throughout 1996. However, they were a little late. Between 1984 and 1995, 12 separate incidents saw children getting tangled up in the hammock and dying of asphyxiation. Truly a dangerous, dangerous toy. What's the most dangerous toy you ever played with? Let us know in the comments. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time!